Hey guys, Modelling Weekly here. Well, I'm back after my four-month unannounced hiatus due to my A-level exams. It's all almost over now though, so back to regular uploads pretty soon. I'll be kicking it off in this video with a full build of Eduard's 148th scale Sopwith Camel, painted up in a very interesting and colourful scheme. I hope you enjoy it. Included in the box is exactly what you'd expect from a standard Eduard Profipack boxing. The full array of plastic parts, a beautiful full colour instruction booklet, paint masks, photo etch and some nicely rendered decals. Tooled in 2021, this is a pretty recent kit and it shows in the quality of the parts. I couldn't find any flash whatsoever and the details are just beautiful with perfectly crisp definition. Unfortunately however, a couple of my more delicate parts arrived broken on the sprue, which was likely down to the fact that all the parts are packed together in the same bag. This is really the only complaint I have for the kit up to this point in time. Other than this, everything seems to be in perfect order so it should be a fun build. Not too much in terms of clear plastic for this kit, however the windshields that are included look perfectly acceptable. The photo etch parts and paint masks are also up to Eduard's usual high standard. The build was initiated with the creation of the wicker chair using photo etch parts, along with a rod to bend the backrest into shape. Whenever I worked with PE parts on this build, I made use of either Everbuild or VMS CA glue as they provide a rock solid bond. With the pilot's seat assembled, I moved on to adding any other photo etch parts that required installation before painting began. For some, I made use of an applicator stick that I highlighted in my CA glue tutorial. With the interior parts all ready for some paint, I fixed them to a block of foam and began laying down the Mr. Surface of 1500 black primer that would make reappearances throughout this build. Whilst it's not gloss, it still provides a good base layer for all types of paint including metallics. Speaking of metallics, I moved on to painting the bare metal interior sections of the aircraft using Mr. Super Metallic Superfine Silver, a very reliable lacquer based metallic paint. The wicker chair was then painted with XF60 dark yellow and given some light post shading off camera in order to give it some more depth. A similar yet slightly different tan shade was then used as a base layer for the exposed wood sections of the interior. This effect will be built upon very soon with oil paints in order to add some grain. I'd just like to quickly take this moment to say a massive thanks to all of my channel members here on YouTube. Your continued support means so much now more than ever, considering the difficult past few months of the channel has had. I can't thank you all enough. If you want to find out more about what being a channel member entails, feel free to click the join button down below for more info. Thank you all so much. Right, let's get back to the video. Following the application of the base wood shade, the rest of the interior is painted with sail colour from Mr. Colour in order to imitate the doped fabric. This was built up gradually as it's quite a thin paint to spray and I didn't want to achieve any tide marks. Once this was done, I remasked the wooden sections and got to work with some burnt umber oil paint. In order to replicate the wooden panels of this aircraft, I followed a tutorial made by James from LPJ Models, which outlines the process very clearly. In short, it consisted of laying down a pretty solid base layer of slightly thinned oil paint and then streaking through this paint with a white spirit dampened frayed brush in order to achieve the grain effect. I'd say it turned out alright, but definitely not the best. The oil paint was then sealed in place with a mix of Tamiya Clear Orange and GX100 Gloss Varnish in order to provide a lacquered wood appearance. As you can see here, it's not too bad once the varnish has been applied.
With the basic painting down, I stripped off all the masking tape and began assembling the cockpit sub-assemblies. Everything fitted flawlessly, even the damaged part from earlier. The dials on the cockpit instrument panel were based with Tamiya gold leaf prior to the application of the dial decals in order to give them a shiny gold rim around the outside. With all of those sub-assemblies done, I moved on to the giving the entire cockpit a basic oil wash made from Abtolung 502 sepia and a mix of white spirit. This was touched against all the raised and recessed details in order to make them stand out against the rest of the cockpit. Excess was then either removed completely or blended into the surface using both a white spirit dampened brush and cotton swab. Prior to the wash being applied, I had given the cockpit a coat of flat varnish so this provided a great base for the blending. More sepia along with the dry blending method was then used in areas where leaks and additional grime would build up, such as around the fuel tanks and other reservoirs. Some paint was brushed onto the surface with one brush and then a second softer brush was used to blend it into the surface. The seat belts were then bent into shape using tweezers and fixed into place on the wicker seat using CA glue. Following this, it was time for the final assembly of the cockpit. The internal wooden bracing was first added, followed by the fuel tanks, flight controls and the seat. The fuselage halves themselves went together with no issues whatsoever. The Clerge engine was then primed using Mr. Surface of 1500 Black, preparing it for the layer of super metallic iron that soon followed. The same oil wash as earlier was used on the engine following this, without the need for a layer of varnish as the super metallic paint is pretty resistant by itself. The one-piece cowling included in this kit was a nice touch. There were no fit issues whatsoever with both the installation of this and the engine itself. Time to add the control surfaces. I had to be very careful when putting these in place as the contact points with the rest of the aircraft were very small. Using CA glue here rather than plastic cement would probably be a very good option. All the minor join seams between the fuselage halves were filled and sanded back using VMS Black CA glue, along with a variety of sanding sponge grades working up from 400 to 3000, providing a very nice and smooth finish. With this done and the aircraft wiped down with isopropyl alcohol, I moved on to the primer layer. Here I yet again made use of Mr. Surface of 1500 Black, which is a great base for initiating the following pre-shading stage. All the varnish and primer coats applied to this model were executed using my Harder and Sneebeck Ultra, fitted with a 0.4mm nozzle to accommodate for the larger particle size, as well as to increase coverage. Before I began with the pre-shading, I sprayed and masked off the bare metal cowling that was featured on this particular scheme I was going for. Super fine silver from Mr. Colour was yet again used here. 
Some shading was added to the cowling by spraying on some super metallic iron, focused around areas where panels meet or where the metal may be stretched or contorted slightly. The first step that I took in the pre-shading process was to mask off all of the ribs on the wings as well as the horizontal stabilizers. By doing this I would be able to spray all the ribs and spars of the white shade so that they would stand out prominently against the rest of the wing. This was an essential step from the point of realism as they would catch the sunlight much more effectively than the rest of the wing in real life. I made use of AK Real Colors white for the entirety of the pre-shading process on this aircraft. I absolutely love this paint as despite being a notoriously difficult colour to spray, its coverage properties and consistency are absolutely on point. Thinned with Mr. Colour Leveling Thinner, it makes for the perfect white paint. After highlighting the ribs, I gave them a sort of glowing effect by running back over them once or twice without the masks applied. This would help to add more of a gradient to the colour surrounding them. With the wings and control surfaces pre-shaded, I moved on to highlighting the rest of the aircraft. A mottled effect was used in most places, which would help to add some more interest to the surface of the aircraft once properly painted. For this purpose, I used a fine 0.15mm nozzle. The upper wings on this particular colour scheme featured a blocked out white panel, so this was sprayed whilst I still had the paint in my airbrush. I didn't fancy using the kit supplied RAF decals on this aircraft, so the tail insignia was then masked off in order to spray the vertical stripes of insignia blue and red. These were created using custom Tamiya mixes. The red was made using 15 parts red, 2 parts hull red and 3 parts yellow, whilst the blue was made using 10 parts royal blue and 6 parts blue azure, the latter of which being an AKRC shade as I couldn't find a Tamiya alternative. Masks were then cut again in order to spray the circular blue marking on the upper wings of the aircraft. Mr. Colour C-34 was used for this purpose, as suggested by the instructions. With these minor painting aspects done, I moved on to blocking in the underside of the aircraft, which in this case made use of sail colour, representing doped fabric once again. I built this up in layers in order to retain the effect created by the pre-shading, which wasn't too difficult considering how thin the paint was. I then added some white to the base sail colour shade. Whilst this does decrease its saturation by a small amount, I didn't really have much of a choice because it was already a very light colour, so lightening it further was difficult without using white. This adjusted shade was sprayed along all of the ribs and other areas where light damage or stretching was likely to occur. Using a shade even further lightened by white, I then sprayed through an AK mottling mask in order to push the variation of the surface even further. These random blotches add more visual interest to the surface and further highlights were also added without the help of the mask. Mr. Colour C-34 was brought out yet again in order to spray the horizontal stabilisers and a thick band around the middle of the aircraft's fuselage. I told you it was a colourful scheme. I sprayed very carefully yet again, being aware of the pre-shading underneath and making sure its addition was not in vain. I then lightened the C-34 with a few drops of blue azure from AK, which is a very chalky light blue shade. This aided with post-shading the blue, whilst also maintaining a good level of saturation in the colour. This was essential as it would be toned down later on with varnish layers and weathering. With all of that masked off, it was time for the main colour, a rather disappointingly brown one. Mixed from a roughly 50-50 ratio of flat earth and hull red, this slightly red-brown shade was sprayed across the majority of the upper wing surfaces. Yet again, I made a conscious effort to maintain a certain level of pre-shading effect in this colour.
AKRC buff was then added into the mix to perform them post shading layers. These were yet again sprayed along the areas where the fabric would be stretched more than others. The two red side panels were then masked off and sprayed. I didn't note down the exact mixture for these, but it was a combination of Tamiya Flat Red and Hull Red using the instructions as a guide. Finally, the bare wood sections were masked and sprayed with the same desert yellow base as before, ready for some work with oil paints. Burnt umber oil paint was again first blocked in with a normal brush, making sure it reached all of the tight corners and crevices. It was slightly thinned with white spirit in order to make this process slightly easier. A stiff, frayed brush was then dampened with white spirit and brushed along in the direction of the grain, just as I had with the interior wooden panels. As I had some more experience at this stage, I feel the result was slightly better. Let me know what you think. The effect was once again finished off with a varnish layer combining GX100 with Tamiya Clear Orange. I found that this really helped to bring out the grain and make the wood a lot more realistic. Some smaller details could now be patched in, including the leather rim around the edge of the cockpit. Time for some more masking. As I mentioned before, I didn't fancy making those decals work around the rib details in the surface of the plastic, so instead I measured and cut out masks for the roundels using a compass cutter and vernier caliper. These roundels were painted stage by stage, with the outer white rim first being applied, followed by the insignia blue and insignia red in the centre. The tyres were then painted with Tamiya Sky Grey the hubs of which had previously been coloured using the same red mix that made an appearance on the side of the aircraft itself. Time for a bit of assembly now. I decided to take this moment to add some more of the other parts that had been left out for the painting stage, including the propeller and landing gear arrangement. Adding these now would help to unify them with the rest of the aircraft as I carried out the weathering stage later on. The few decals that remained after my masked replacements were applied using Micro Set and Sole as per usual. They were of a very nice quality and I had no issues applying them. A small amount of white spirit was then used to dissolve the carrier film on these decals. This would help massively in unifying them with the surface without the need for sanding and excessive varnish layers to be applied. I did have to make sure however that I didn't use too much white spirit as this could end up damaging the decals. All my work up to this point in time was sealed in with a nice layer of Mr. Colour flat varnish and this would prepare the aircraft very nicely for some oil weathering. Weathering was initiated with a sepia oil wash made from Abteilung 502 oil paint along with bog standard white spirit. It was mixed down to the consistency of milk and then applied to all of the raised and recessed details on the model's surface. It took very nicely to the protruding rib details on the wings. A white spirit dampened brush was then used to remove and blend the excess oil paint. I frequently cleaned the brush using a paper towel in order to make sure I wasn't just spreading the oil paint around on the surface. Now 
More of the same wash was then applied to the rest of the model, making sure to hit all of the smaller details that it features. Excess wash on the cowling was blended in using the dry blending method, as this area was likely to be grimier than the rest of the aircraft. Some turned dirt splashes from MIG were added to the underside of the airframe using a toothpick to flick the mixture towards the model. These splashes were focused towards the landing gear as well as the parts of the aircraft that would be closest to the ground. I then once again sealed in the entire model with a layer of flat varnish. I didn't like the effect this had on the wooden areas however, so I masked them off and sprayed them with gloss varnish in order to restore their sheen. It's final assembly time. As I had done a lot of these throughout the build already, this essentially meant adding some smaller details as well as the upper wing and supports. The final construction step was to add the rigging. For this purpose, I bought a set of photo etch rigging lines with realism in mind and definitely not the fact I was lazy at this point in the build. I fixed these in place using tweezers and CA glue. Well, here is the completed model. Given it's been on the go for almost four months now, I'd say it's come out with a fairly acceptable finish. This was my first time fully committing to a biplane build, and a first world war aircraft at that, so I was pretty dubious about it when I started. Despite this however, it turned out to be a lot of fun and I can't wait to get started on my next one. The kit itself was absolutely gorgeous, and apart from the two damaged parts that came with the kit, I have literally zero complaints. For someone who likes biplanes and fancies a fun little build that isn't too demanding, this would definitely be in my list of recommended go-tos. I should probably point out at this point that I'm not being sponsored by Eduard, it's just genuinely a great kit. With all of that said, I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts in the comments below, so don't forget to leave one behind. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like as it helps with the YouTube algorithm, and if you didn't enjoy the video, then leave a dislike and let me know why in the comments. Well, that's it from me today. Thanks so much yet again to my Modeling Weekly channel members, and thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!